Hello and welcome to episode 14 of Ask Carl G Confidence Riding Horses and Cheers. I don't know how it is where you are living, but right now it's just uh, the heavens have opened. So we're back in the nerve centre. Those of you who remember the early days of Live at Five or recognise this nerve centre, here we are. This is where I stash all my all my swords, all my shashka, which are the swords that we use for Jikitovka and various horsey things in here in the corner there, just hiding. Oh, let's just turn that a little bit. Oh, I just see Lumi and the bear, which we had up for auction, which has been won, and they're going to come and get it the day after tomorrow, I think. Oh, no, about four days' time. Um, marvellous. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Cheryl. Thank you for joining. So I thought I'd pop on. I hope you can all hear me okay. And uh, the light's a bit funny in here because it's very dark outside. And I think the camera's having a hard time picking up, but we should be good for the for the audio. So super interesting. Uh, someone came for horse archery lesson yesterday in case those of you who don't know i have a stables near london where we teach some horse sports that you might not have heard of horseback archery which is a real sport and is governed by the world horseback archery federation of korea um, and we work underneath their guidelines uh, we're affiliated to them, our center is, which is very nice. We got to go to Korea and go up on stage and, and get a certificate. So that's all lovely. Mostly we teach the Korean style of thumb draw here. Uh, most of the cultures uh, for horse archery draw with their thumb. And they actually call this European draw or Mediterranean draw, draw with your fingers. There we are. Um, so we have thumb draw. We're also aware of a few different ways of draw, loading and drawing your bow. And I'm just in the process of changing to Mongolian style, which is a back quiver, which is a, a completely different way of, of loading your arrow. So that's all jolly interesting. And we, the horse archery season has started again after the coronavirus and the lockdown. So that's quite nice. Hello to everybody who's joined us. Monsoon in South Wales for a couple of hours, but now the sun's come out. Right, well, Chris, obviously, is, <laughs> it's made its way westward and uh, has arrived here. Hi, Nat. Hi, Karen. Hi, Angela. Diane, thank you. Thank you for joining. Alison, lovely. And I've already said hello to Sarah and Cheryl. Sarah, sorry. Um, yeah, so... This is the thing. It's a super interesting conversation. So a lady called Laura has come quite a lot this year. She's had private lessons in North Black Archery. She joined the Jigatovka weekend, which is another of the um, skills that we teach on horseback. It's a sport from Russia. Um, Jigit meaning horseback warrior. And Tofka meaning exercise or discipline or art or activity. The activity of the mounted warrior is what it is, or the discipline of the mounted warrior. And Jigitovka has a weapon section and a gymnastic section. And you might have heard of the Russian Cossacks or the Ukrainian Cossacks. That's what they're doing, the Jigitovka, because they're the Jigits, the mounted warriors of the Cossacks whose land spreads over both those countries. So we teach Jigitovka and we teach horseback archery and, of course, rider confidence that some of you might have been on. And that's about, And then we base a show here as well that, that travels out and tours. So here's the thing. Um, Laura's been coming quite a lot and she's been getting on really well. She's an okay rider. She seemed quite happy on a horse. Um, but with the horse archery and the Jigatovka, there's a lot of standing up in your stirrups. I remember once we had, had somebody come to ride our horses who said they could ride. And 
actually no that's they, they said they could do horseback archery already and that was in the days when i believed people when they said things and the horseback archery you have to let go of the reins obviously in order to have a bow in this hand and a arrow in this hand you tie a knot in the reins and then you can also attach the the tail the loop of the tail to the saddle as well if you want to be extra sure that the reins aren't going anywhere but they don't go anywhere so you tie a knot in the reins and you put the knot put the knot down on the neck do your stuff the horse is steered by being in a track you do get open events where you steer them by by a uh, leg pressure but here as a school with a lot of beginners we don't want to be sending people off trying leg pressure at the same time that they're trying to learn to load and shoot an arrow so we have our horses in a track with little ropes either side so you don't have to worry about steering they start themselves they stop themselves because they do the same thing every time so you don't have to worry about starting and stopping all you have to worry about is standing up in your stirrups really quite high above the horse higher than you may think not standing up in your stirrups like when you're jumping but properly standing up in your stirrups with straight legs getting right above the saddle the saddle can be really quite far below you and this chap came and he said yeah i can do horseback archery and started just yanking the horse in the mouth and hanging and not doing it at his archery and pulling really hard and and we were like what are you doing to this horse stop stop it you're like you have to let go of the reins and start doing archery and he just wouldn't and eventually he turned around and he got quite angry <laughs> and he said uh, how are you supposed to stop falling off the horse if you're not holding on to the reins oh my god you, you should you, you're not hanging on to the reins in order to stay on the horse. The reins are for steering. You know? And right, stop. They're not for hanging on and stopping you falling off. And it had never occurred to this gentleman that the stirrups, these two big platforms that are on either side of the horse for you to stand on and if you stand on this one then you won't fall this way and if you stand on this one then you won't fall this way so if you stand on them both that is actually a lot wider than your little bum perched on the saddle so get off the saddle spread your stirrups away from the horse and stand up and you've got a stable base that's more stable than when you're normally standing waiting for the bus anyway as part of these sports we need to get off the saddle because we need to be more fluid to turn around be able to shoot targets behind us and on the offside and, and we move our bums off the saddle quite a lot and uh we're able to do that because we're standing on the stirrups and and got our bums right off the horse initially you need to just get your bum off the saddle and go in a straight line we'll worry about twisting around shooting behind us and all that later so the posture is get your horse going and then stand up and let the horse carry you as if you were just standing on the ground but you're standing on the stirrups and you just think of your archery just load and shoot load and shoot load and shoot finish the track and then stop your horse so initially people have quite a problem with this standing up because it's a lot straighter than usual excuse me I have some it's not show jumping you're not leaning onto the horse's neck um you're not bums out the back it's just very straight and initially people wobble about obviously because it's new our horses are ever so good they're quite happy to let you grab hold of their mane and just steady yourself so you've got three points while you figure that out and the horses are quite used to that and they don't mind and then you can just keep your hand on their mane and then take your hand away a millimeter two minutes okay am i all right am i all right oh actually i am and you find yourself just standing there so this lovely lady laura who's been here quite a lot she uh did the jigitovka she's done uh endless beginners horse archery 
half day courses and full day courses. She's come and got some private lessons. And she was stood up yesterday and was super stable, super stable. All the fear and anxiety and the wobble and the crouching and, and the just testing whether it's safe had gone. And she was just up, being carried along by the horse and shoot, shoot, shoot. And she was super solid. Now, nothing else had changed. The saddle hadn't changed. She was even on the same horse, I think. Um, the stirrups hadn't changed. Nothing was more solid than before. Just her belief in her ability and her familiarity with the with the sensation of being up on the stirrups and carried away made her super stable. It was lovely to watch. Absolute joy. And I, I commented when we finished the session, it was like, you've done really well. That was super stable. What's changed in what's changed that that now you're doing exactly the same thing and you're super stable, whereas back in May you were trying to do the exact same thing and you couldn't do it. And she said, Well, one lesson you said this, and one lesson you said that, and one lesson you said this. He said, and then I was speaking to my friend who's a downhill skier, and uh, not about anything else, but downhill skiing. I wasn't thinking about horses. And she said that she was practicing for her downhill skiing by getting one of those balance boards and just um, standing there doing this balance board, which is like a wooden board with a, with a ball in it. And she said it was to help her core muscles for her downhill skiing. And then the idea just came to me, well, why don't I get that and I'll learn how to stand on stirrups? So she got this balance board, long story short, she went and bought a balance board and practice, and that helped improve her core and helped improve her balance. And lo and behold, she's super solid. And that really got me thinking, because recently I've been putting up four archery videos from my trip to Mongolia where uh, I've been dying to go to Mongolia for a decade, more, longer. And finally, we got to go to Mongolia. It was utterly brilliant. And I've been putting up videos of the archers from Mongolia. And an awful lot of the comments are people going, oh, my God, they must have such strong cores. I wouldn't be able to do that. My core strength isn't that good. My core And I've been putting up videos about other things that we do. And I suddenly realised that this doubting your own core strength is actually quite a common objection as to why you can't do the things that you want to do so if i'm connecting through to any of you now about your core strength then this is invaluable because the fact is laura didn't spend her time thinking my core strength isn't up to par. I can't do this. Why isn't my core strength good enough? Or anything like that. What she thought was, how can I get my core strength up? How can I get my balance up? And she went out and bought a balance board. It's such a simple thing, but simply by changing the question, there was no doubt in her mind that she was going to stand on the stirrups. And so once you've decided, how can I achieve this problem as opposed to why can't I do this? Then at a time when she wasn't even thinking about horses at all, the answer came. I've studied hypnotherapy, I've studied psych psychotherapy. I know that if she'd have taken the attitude of these endless comments on my videos of the sports that we do, my core wouldn't be strong enough, I can't do that, etc., etc., then her subconscious mind would not be prepared at the moment that you needed it. If you decided that you watched a video or saw a sport and decided you couldn't do that. And when you had a conversation with a downhill skier who was getting their core strength up, it wouldn't have occurred to you to suddenly pop up and go, that's a good idea, maybe that'll apply to me. 
the way to engage your subconscious to do the thing that you want to do and to get your subconscious to work for you and with you of the things you want to do is to attempt the thing that you want to do you'll either succeed or you'll learn the opposite of success is learning and if you're learning you've learned how not to do it and now you're wondering how what to try next that's the key how am i going to do this how am i going to do this how am i going to do this it's not like that how am i going to do this and if you think it often enough, your subconscious will start noticing things and encourage you to think out of the box. Go. I'm going to try what that downhill skier is trying. And I just find that so fascinating. I had to come on and share this with you because it's utterly brilliant. An utterly brilliant story. So interesting and relevant to how to get your subconscious to help you achieve the things that you want to do. That's it. Just going to quickly read the comments. Lovely hello, everybody. Especially, oh, oh, Kerry, you're coming to try horse archery on Sunday. Very exciting. Super. Oh, good. You'll know all about it then. Lovely. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, I've had no internet for a week. The, store, the lightning storm put it down and it hasn't gone up. I've also had no landlines. If you've been trying to get through to me, there's somebody getting, we had a, a series of messages getting increasingly cross as the week went on. And then we phoned up. I was like, sorry, phone's been down for a week. And they're like, oh, sorry. That made us laugh. Oh, the lovely people. Smash in. Hi, Rebecca. How's the Isle of Wight? Rebecca Kingswell organised a talk. I wonder when the talk season's going to start again. I uh, generally tour the country to equestrian clubs and riding clubs and even village halls where people have got together and just put on seminars about my philosophy. See if we can help some people, do some questions and answers. Super popular, about 40 or 50 people. Um, but now I've no idea how the, how the land's going to lie in terms of COVID-19 and people not getting together. So I don't think it's quite time to be booking the talks yet. In fact, I had a load of talks when, when lockdown went off and we had to shut them all. <laughs> I didn't do them. So there you go. Lovely. I have been trying to find something that I could use. Let me just put your comment up, Rebecca. Okay. Trying to use something like to improve my balance. I've been missed down on the boat. Setting up a ratchet strap between two trees. Slacklining. I like slack lining, it's good fun, but terribly difficult. But yes, that's super. And thinking out the box is, is, is just, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Brilliant. I'm also, uh, in my own subconscious, because it's like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? I've been recommending and speaking to people about the things that have improved my my favourite things. Um, now this wobble board, I have a trampette that I use a lot for training trick riding, but I've also seen a lot of people using the trampette to mount on their horses, make it easier to mount. Those little, little gym trampettes that are like 20 quid from Aldi. So I found a heavy duty one of those. Um, I put on a post a little while ago about my wife Sana's coat, tail coat that she bought, the riding coat from Georgia in Dublin. I've got a few favourite things that I think I'm going to find the suppliers, gather them together and put them all in one place. Another favourite thing is... Um, LED light up strips, like um, a little light up strip vest and a little light up strip bracelets that I keep in my 
outdoor riding pocket and they're still there from last winter just because i never want to be worrying about or cutting a ride short because these dark clouds came over and now it's dark and i'm out or it's darker than i like and sometimes in the winter it can get dark at like three o'clock and suddenly you find you're not wanting to go out or cutting off a ride early not doing the things that you want to do and just for the sake of having a little high-vis vest i mean we've all got a high-vis vest if we know it, it's going to be um dark or, or getting dark early but you never know if the dark clouds going out over but just something as simple as keeping a little lighted bracelet in your pocket or a little lighted it's kind of like a, a, a vest thing or, or braces thing little led braces thing just keeping it in your pocket all the time so that it's always there it just means these little things means we can ride more confidently if we know we're going to stay dry we can ride more confidently if we know that we're working on our core strength we can ride more confidently and i've just got my favorite thing so i'm going to start gathering them together now i've, I've been individually promoting them i'm going to bob more onto one page where people can go and and put their favorite things and then we can all look forward to a better winter or a better riding prepare ourselves for next spring anyway i've digressed now lovely thank you very much thank you for joining and please leave any comments the uh luminoso bear as i say is going the latest artist not russell that is a print of Lumi on a job. This was a job with Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones, which is why he's been employed to be a unicorn. That is currently on eBay. If you put Luminoso Unicorn, you'll find that. It's in a solid oak frame. It comes with all the security tabs and the certificates of provenance. Uh, how is Lumi doing, little man? He's uh, having a fairly constant train of ulcers erupting in his eyes, which are quite small. Um, when his eyes get too sore, we up the antibiotic and we up the um, lubricant. So, and, and he's got protective masks on. His eyes themselves are doing quite well. At the moment, it's looking like we might just save them both, which is absolutely amazing. The ulcers do stand a chance of becoming infected. So it's, I'm giving myself 90 10 that we're going to get out of this. So there we go. Um, to everyone who's bought any of the Luminoso stuff from Luminoso's shop, thank you very much. The Jigitofka t-shirts are on their way. Um, the other t-shirts and the, cal the calendars have been printed and dispatched. So that's all jolly good. And I'll be um, re-advertising every now and then on a little post where you can get those. There we are. Thank you, everybody, for your support. And I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening.